What is the Border Gateway Protocol and how does it work? BGP is only the biggest routing protocol in the world because it has to be. It's the routing protocol of the internet. It has to find all of the routes that the internet has and carry them around the world. Now, this is not a protocol that's designed for mere mortals. This is a protocol designed at the service provider. So for example, this might be CenturyLink who actually runs my home internet connection and I would have my house sitting right here uh, going up to CenturyLink. Now, at my house, I would have a router but it would not be anything, well, <laughs> okay, at a normal person's house, you would ha not have a real router, you would probably have a D-Link or a Linksys or, or and I, don't, I don't mean to insult these by not calling them real routers, but they're not. So these routers have essentially a default gateway to the internet and as I open open my computer and go to cbtnuggets.com, my router just says, well, I'm chucking it out there because I have no idea. But now we're into CenturyLink's world. Now CenturyLink is responsible for looking at this massive routing table and getting me the right direction to CBT Nuggets website. So then how does CenturyLink know how to get to CBT Nuggets? Well, welcome to the magic of BGP. BGP allows CenturyLink to peer with its other service provider neighbors. Let's say it's, we've just got AT&T and level three, and now you start seeing this big mesh we call the internet forming where everybody starts connecting to everybody and exchanging routes. Now, BGP has a funny world to manage because it kind of manages this trusted and untrusted relationships at the same time. CenturyLink peers with AT&T because they have to. That's AT&T is not their company. It's just a partner organization that they've agreed to exchange their routes. But in no way does CenturyLink really trust AT&T because it has no control over their employees or no control of their routers. So first off, unlike all the other routing protocols, neighbors don't just automatically form. I have to go in and configure BGP neighbors. I have to say, CenturyLink, you will talk to AT&T. And AT&T has to say, and I agree. And I'm going to configure my side to communicate with you then both sides can figure all kinds of policies that says, okay, I'm not going to let you mess me up, CenturyLink, and I'm not going to let you mess me up, AT&T. So they put filters like crazy on the routers to make sure, for instance, that AT&T doesn't let private addresses sneak through or allow some other kind of address to sneak through that messes up my routing. Think of BGP like a friendly dog going through the neighborhood. You're like, ooh, I want to pet you, but I don't want you to bite me. <laughs> that analogy only kind of works, but you get the idea, right? So BGP looks at routing as big picture. It's routing through a, a network the size of the internet, so it doesn't have the time to really look at individual routers. It says, I'm going to look at autonomous systems, which these things could contain hundreds of routers inside of them. So if this is you, you can now, we're no longer AT&T, right? If this is you, let's say you're a service router, or you have a company big enough to run BGP. I mean, maybe, maybe you're, you're working for like an Intel or something like that to where you've got uh, you know giant internet connections here, you're hosting major services here where people are coming in to your system to get access to those resources. You are literally going to receive hundreds of thousands of routes from all of your BGP peers and now your system, your routers in your system have to figure out what are the best ones to choose. And it's not easy. BGP doesn't have a simple metric that says, oh, well, whatever's the fastest bandwidth, because it doesn't see all the bandwidth. It, it's not going to say, well, whichever is the bigger router, because it can't even tell what kind of router, it, what, what routers you're going through. It really has to look at a sophisticated list of metrics. Are you ready for this? I just grabbed this website just by doing a quick search for BGP best path. And you can see, you know, step one, it's, it's almost like, think of BGP as like having a bajillion routes, right? Think of, of you standing in front of a room of a million people and you go, okay, everybody with a red shirt, you go home. Okay, everybody that has brown eyes, you go home too. Everybody, and you're trying to narrow this down of millions of people, you're trying to narrow it down to the one who you're going to give a gift to or something like that. That's what BGP has to do. So literally every single route's like, okay, let's see, does any of these have have a higher weight? Nope. Does anyone have a higher local preference? Uh, did anyone, uh, any one of these routes, uh, is it one that I originate? I mean, you, you can see this list just goes on and on and on and on. And obviously we don't have time to talk through what each and every one of these things are. But by time it's sent on, you see number 11, it's like, I will find a best path. I'm just going to go with a random roll of the dice and pick the router with the lowest neighbor address. So what, you know, it's kind of like if everything is tied, whoever has the lower IP address as a neighbor relationship ends up becoming the best route. 
So when you really dive in and learn BGP, you spend a lot of time looking at those metrics because each one of those are something that you can modify and you can tweak to make sure that your system, maybe as a service writer, as an enterprise customer, is choosing the best internet path. Last thing I want to mention is BGP is the slowest routing protocol in the world. Seriously. Everybody's like, oh man, it's so big, it must be like ninja fast, and it's not at all. Have you ever registered a domain name? That's like one of the most exciting days of your life as a new IT person, right? You're like, oh, oh, I've got, you know, like for instance, I used to have the, the blog ciscoblog.com before Cisco took it from me, um, but I'm not bitter much. Uh, so, so when I registered that, I'm like, I'm so excited, I have the blog name ciscoblog.com, and it took days before it actually showed up on the internet. I was bummed because it has to be that way. People are registering domain name all the time. It takes a while before it actually shows up on the internet and all that. Same thing with BGP. You can't have, like, I, how many times does a network go down around the world? A lot. I mean, right then in that little pause, a hundred networks just went down and went up and BGP has to calculate for that. There's flapping internet routes all over the place. So literally BGP is one of those protocols that's like, oh, network went down. Let's wait and see if it comes back up before I advertise it to anybody. Hmm. Wait some time. Nope, nope, no, nope, that's coming out. Let me tell my neighbor. Neighbor's like, oh, well, let's give it some time. I mean, it takes time both to add a network or to remove a network from the BGP routing table. What I'll leave you with is this. Go to Google and type in BGP Looking Glass. It's, your, it's, it's a blast. This allows you to peer into. There's actually looking glasses that allow you to tell that into their router and do show IP routes. What these are for is allow you to see all around the world. There's looking glasses in every part of the world you can get into and see if your routes are showing up there. If you ever wonder, well, how does Japan get to my network? You can go to a looking glass in Japan and find out what it's thinking is the best route to end up reaching your autonomous system. There is so much more to BGP. Like I find myself just going, hey, 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 uh, biting my tongue because there's so much more I can expound on this. But this is a micro nugget. So if you would like to see some specific topic in BGP, let me know. Put a comment at the bottom of this nugget. For now, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.